Today, we'll be kicking things off with some very erectifying Starship updates. Then we'll go over some Crew Dragon news, one of which involves Tom Cruise. Look into Starlink and its upcoming launch, as well as some not so near, but still extremely exciting missions. Finishing with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. So we've been anticipating for quite some weeks now the deliberate demise of SpaceX's SN7.1 prototank to test their new 304L stainless steel. And as we went over in previous week's episodes, it had already gone through a series of stress tests, but never popped. Well, it was loaded up again this week on Monday night and Tuesday morning, but still never pushed to failure either time. But about 24 hours later, it finally happened, as shown here on Lab Padre's footage taken on site. Yes! Oh, Richard, I'm so happy. Hold me. Still no word yet from Elon or SpaceX concerning how well the test went, but all signs indicate it was good enough to move on to the first 304L stainless steel Starship, SN8. Prior to SN7.1's pop, SN8 was moved out of the mid-bay to allow for more room for its fin installation. And both were attached over the course of a couple days. Kind of hard to tell in Nomad's picture here because they're folded up, but they're there. Right now, it's speculation as to what exactly the plan is. Will SpaceX top the vessel off with a nose cone before transporting it down to the pad for testing? They really only need it for its 60,000 foot flight due to its embedded header tank that stores fuel for landing burns. But you know, they'll probably wanna test that out before then. Maybe that's what the second static fire test Elon told us about is going to be for. The fins, however, do need to be on there because it makes sense to cryo-freeze the rocket, contracting the steel a tiny bit, and perform some fin flappage just to make sure they can still actuate. SpaceX did have road closures in place to transport SN8 down to the launch site, but quickly canceled them, which does lead us to believe she will remain noseless for a while. Well, this just came in. Go figure after I already uploaded this video to YouTube. Looks like we got some closures starting tomorrow. So yeah, definitely no time for a nose job. Elon tweeted that during its actual 20-click flight, most likely all flaps will fold after landing to reduce the chances of wind tippage. There may be some cases where flaps deployed help stability, like a change in wind direction, in which case one or more flaps will extend. Also, we really need better legs for Starship. They're coming. Yeah, when you have a heavy upper body like Starship, definitely don't skip on leg day at the gym, people. <coughs> SN10 is still a work in progress. All three tank bulkheads have been sleeved with rings. No stacking yet though. It's gotta wait its turn in line for an open seat inside the midbay. SN9 is currently being stacked in there, but now that SN8 is out, it could be happening pretty soon. SN11 skirt has been spotted, but this is the big news of the week as far as construction is concerned. The first parts of the first super heavy booster have been located. It's a three ring segment that will eventually contain the common bulkhead that will separate its propellants. Once SpaceX has created enough rings, they'll begin stacking them inside their new high bay, which received its roof this week. SM5 and 6 took shelter inside there over the weekend because of the weather, and it gave us an even better idea of exactly how tall this booster is really going to be. Stack SM5 on SM6 and you're still not at the appropriate height. Mother of God. Starship's engine, Raptor, is still undergoing tests and improvements. The former of which in McGregor, Texas, where local Reagan is keeping an eye and ear on things for us. Tweeting, a Raptor test burned for about a minute and 30 seconds on the newly renovated tripod stand and a short but deep roar coming from a horizontal stand. Last night, SpaceX released some video of a recent Raptor vac full duration test fire. So obviously things must be going pretty well on that front. Last we heard, Rat back reached 330 bar, which is insane. Elon said they may increase the ratio of the nozzle. This particular version is at 107. Also, a Falcon 9 booster was vertical in McGregor, as well as a Falcon 9 second stage. This booster may be the same one that was spotted by Gary Blair for NASA's space flight, and if that's the case, then it's actually a side booster for the next Falcon Heavy launch for the Space Force. It does look like a Falcon 9 booster though with that Block 4 interstage attached, but it's just for testing purposes. It will eventually be replaced with a nubby nose cone. That Falcon Heavy mission is scheduled to launch early next year. But let's look at some more missions, some of which that will launch prior to that. Starting with Dragon operations. We've got Crew-1, the second manned flight to the International Space Station, slated for October 23rd. 
then Crew 2, possibly the first mission to reuse a Dragon Capsule on Falcon 9 booster, heading up on March 30th. And of course, let's not forget about Tommy Cruz. His mission to space made the news again this week. It has officially been confirmed that he and director Doug Lyman will ride in Dragon to the space station in October of next year. SpaceX pilot Lopez Alegria, nailed that name I'm sure, will accompany them. And there is still one seat yet left to fill. But for the none of you that can afford it, don't fret. It's most likely going to another member of the film crew. We also have some Starlink news and missions to go over. SpaceX's next Starlink launch is now scheduled for Monday. I'll be live streaming for that, you can join me. It's using the same booster that took Bob and Doug to space earlier in the summer, and also later launched for the Anasys 2 mission. Local photographer Greg Scott snapped an image of the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship departing the port. So I guess just read the instructions was tagged out for this one. She's currently undergoing sea trials, maybe to rectify whatever issues arose during Starlink's previous scrub. The currents were just too strong even for her upgraded thrusters, so an abort was called. And don't forget, we also have the Falcon 9 launch of the GPS-3 mission scheduled, actually got bumped up one day to Tuesday now. I'll be live for that as well. This week, an Investor.com article was published that detailed the Air Force's excitement and approval of Starlink's network so far. They did a big live fire exercise earlier in the month to test their advanced battle management system that will connect space, air, land, and sea assets. During the test, they used Starlink to communicate with a variety of each, including a Boeing KC-135 Stratotanker. They've already used it to link to an AC-130 gunship built by Lockheed Martin, and to quote Air Force Acquisition Chief William Roper, what I've seen from Starlink has been impressive and positive. Ah. <laughs> and now it's time for today's Honorable Mention. In other non-SpaceX news, we were supposed to have a couple more launches to watch this week, but both have recently been scrubbed. So let's see what's going on. First, ULA was scheduled to launch their Delta Heavy rocket on August 27th, but delayed the launch just prior to liftoff due to pneumatics issues. Their next attempt was going to be tonight, but just this morning they pushed it again because of problems involving the swing arm retraction system. But the good news is they are now aiming for an early Sunday morning launch, so mark your calendars. And yes, for you eagle-eyed missile men, that is the reason SpaceX's Starlink launch was pushed to Monday. And second is the seventh flight of Blue Origin's New Shepard suborbital rocket. Prior to launch on Thursday, teams detected a potential issue with the power supply to the experiments they have on board. So they pushed it to today, but we're still battling a quote, technical issue, and are currently working to fix it. No new launch date has been made public at this time, when it does launch, one of the experiments that will be on board the booster belongs to NASA. They'll be playing with new sensors to aid in their progress toward making precise landings on the moon and beyond for Artemis. Well, that's all I have for you guys today, but I want to thank my eccentric members and patrons who support my channel and the videos I put out for you guys. If you're interested in doing the same, I've got you. Check out the links below for more information. And while you're down there, please remember to check out the sources and support your local SpaceX photographers. Do have a nominal weekend, and until the next one, Godspeed.